Just like how the CSR-1000V is all the rage these days, guess what? The ASA firewall, it's never going away. And that thing gets better every single year. The latest versions of ASA can be virtualized in the ASA-V appliance. But here's the kicker. You may be thinking to yourself, wait, it comes with CML. Why don't I just use the one with CML? Because it's not the latest version. If you want to leverage the latest version of ASA, maybe because you want to mimic what's happening in your production environment, you got to go through a little bit of extra steps to get the ASA brought into EVNG, and in this video, we're not only going to talk about how to bring an ASA into your environment, we're also going to talk about how to leverage the GUI server Docker container that comes with EVNG Pro to access that ASA using ASDM and the built-in Java client. Get ready, this is going to be a big one, it's going to be a lot of fun, let's get going. If you're going for your Cisco security certifications, one of the more fun things that you can do is use the latest version of ASAs, especially if you're entitled to it. So what we need to talk about is how to get the latest version of the ASAs rocking and rolling in EVNG because it is a little bit different than the images that come baked into something like CML or viral. So here's how we get started going with that. First things first, you have to have the latest version of the ASA. And what we're working with here is the 9.14.1 release. You see this? If you look at these latest releases here, the 9.14.1 is the newest of the new. And specifically what we're looking for is the QCOW2 image. So when you are entitled to download this, because that is a pretty big part of it, you're going to click the download button. Well, first you're going to log in, then you're going to click the download button, and then you're going to be able to accept the terms and download the QCOW2 image. Now, I've already gotten logged in and downloaded my copy of the QCOW2 images, but this is where you want to go first. You want to go to your software.cisco.com down, slash download, and then go ahead and search for the ASAV, Adaptive Vert Security Virtual Appliance here, and then download the latest version, the one that's going to be the QCOW2. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. This is a different process than the images that come with CML. In fact, we've already talked about how to get an ASA that comes with CML already into EVNG. This is different, though. This is a different version, and there are some extra steps that we got to do to make this happen. So now that I've downloaded my copy of the ASA, this 914.1, it's time to get this built into EVNG. And the couple things that I need to do that, first of all, is I need to have a connection into EVNG's terminal. So I'm going to go to my secure CRT and just automatically SSH into EVNG. I'm also going to use WinSCP so that I can download the files and get them in there. Here, I'll click on EVNG and log in. It asks for my root username and password. And just like that, I'm logged in. Now notice here I have a staging side. This is my local computer. And this is where I've downloaded that QCOW2 folder. And over here, I'm in the root directory. That's just forward slash. So make sure you click the little dot dots or whatever you got to do to get to the forward slash root directory. And that's where we can begin. So first things first, I'm going to go into my latest version of the ASAV. And I'm just going to drag it over here into my root directory. Now I see the file is sitting here in my root directory, and now is where I can jump over here to my terminal. I'm going to begin by creating a folder for the new ASA. We're going to say opt, unit lab, add-ons, kemu, yeah, I'll spell it right, ASAV, hyphen, and do you remember why when we were talking about loading images? The ASAs have to be named ASAV hyphen, and then you can put whatever you want to after that, but it's usually going to be the version number. In my case, I'll put 9. 14 1. I'll press enter and that creates the folder for me. I can confirm that by actually, if I wanted to, by actually going back to WinSCP and browsing to that directory, but I'm not going to do that because we still got more work to do here. Let's now move that file. The MV command is like a cut and paste, but it also gives us the opportunity to actually rename it on the fly. So just to confirm what directory I'm in, I'll give it a print working directory and I see that I'm in the root, so I can say move. And I'll copy the name of this file right here from WinSCP and paste it. And I'm going to say, let's destine it for this folder. So I'll highlight this and paste it. I'll say forward slash. And I'm going to change the name of the file to vert IOA QCOW2. So do you see what's happening here? We're cutting and pasting this file that's in the root folder. We're putting it in the folder that we just created above, but in the process, we're also renaming it to vert IOA QCOW2. So I'll press enter. Oh, you know what? I wasn't actually in the root because that was the root folder. What I should do is I should actually just make this explicitly saying forward slash and then the file. 
there's actually a folder called root, and that's what this was telling me when I did print working directory. Let's press enter now, there we go. Now it's actually perform the operation and move the file. If I actually refresh this screen real quick and scroll down, I see the file is gone. And now the file is in the right place named vertioaqcow2. The next commands that we need to run are gonna be an apt-get update just to make sure we've got everything up to date. We've got the latest packages that we need. Looking good. And now I'm going to say apt git install lib guest fs hyphen tools. I'll press enter. And with that done, I'm going to change into the directory that we created above. So I'll highlight this directory right here, my ASA directory, paste it, and now I'm in that directory. Now check this out. This is how we can actually get started configuring our new ASA for access into EVNG. We have to run this command guest fish hyphen a vert ioa qcow2. I'll press enter there, and then I will type the command run and press enter. So now that this says 100%, and I'm on a prompt here for the fs guest fish thing again, we have some more commands to type. We're trying to enable it so that we can telnet into this ASA rather than have to use VNC. So I'm gonna say mount dev sda2 space forward slash and press enter. Now I'll use the command touch forward slash use underscore tty capital s zero i'll press enter i'll now say u mount space forward slash and exit enter now just like we always do we need to clean and fix permissions so go to the evng documentation and copy and paste this from pretty much any of the how to's or pause this screen so that you get this going opt unit lab wrappers unl underscore wrapper hyphen a fixed permissions. I'll press enter here. And there we go. At this point, our new ASA version 9.14.1 should be ready to rock and roll. So let me jump back to my even G topology real quick. Let's add a node, Cisco ASA V, and in my dropdown, I see the 9.14.1. Now, when I check things out, I can always give this more CPUs, more RAMs, more Ethernet. I can change the name of it. I can even scroll down and confirm that we're going to be accessing this using the Telnet console, which is why we did all that work in the first place. The other thing to point out is that since I'm using the ASA V9141, and I just downloaded it straight from Cisco Downloads, without a proper license, this will be limited to 100 kilobits per second, but if you have a smart license and you get logged in via smart licensing, once this is up and running, you'll get the full speed of the entire ASA appliance. So let's click save here. There's my ASA. I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the switch and I'm going to boot it up. Let's click start. The ASA is coming to life, so I'll give it a click. It launches the Telnet console. That's a good sign so far. We'll let it boot. Hey, look at that. So far, we're off to a good start. In just a minute or two, this device should be brought up to life and we should be using our new ASA. We'll be able to test it out once we bring it up, give it an IP address, and then validate that we can actually reach the HTTPS front end. So after just a couple minutes, the ASA comes to life. Let's get going in here. It says the enable password is not set. Let's just go ahead and set a password like Cisco, Cisco. Let's go into config terminal. Don't need to worry about anonymous reporting. I just wanna make sure that I can access the front end of this device, right? So I see gig 00 is going to be the interface that I want my GUI server or Windows 10 to access it on. So I'll go into interface gig 00. We'll give it an IP address that's on that subnet, something like 10.0.0.5, 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 and we also have to specify which security zone or interface this is. So I'll say name if, how about inside? Let's go with inside. Security level is set to 100 by default with inside. We could also do name if manage and set the security level to 80, something like that would work. We'll exit out of interface mode. We need to make sure we give it a username. So I'll say admin, password. How about C exclamation SCO123 and a privilege level of 15. How about that? Lastly, we need to turn the HTTP server on. How about that? HTTP server enable. And we'll allow HTTP traffic from the inside subnet. Uh-oh, hit enter too soon. So I exit out of configuration mode. And now what I should be able to do is launch my GUI server here. I'm on the native console, so it's going to be using RDP. Let's stretch it out as big as it can go so it looks nice and good, right? I'll bring up my web browser. Let's browse on over to HTTPS colon slash slash. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hit enter too soon again. 10.0.0.0.5 slash admin. 
Well, that would do it, right? An administratively down interface? That would be why I can't access it. Forgotten important one. Interface gig zero zero, no shut. Well, there's some connectivity. That's looking a little bit better. Let's close this terminal here. Let's go back to 10.005, press enter, advanced, accept the risk and continue, and there it is. Now we can install ASDM. Beyond that, if we wanna actually get straight to the ASDM launcher, because we have Java installed on this device, you see we've got here 10.005 admin public. We can slap on the self-contained Java launcher with ASDM.JNLP. We press enter there, and now we can open the Oracle Java Web Start, which takes a second or two to do because this is the GUI server. We click later because it says the Java version is out of date. We'll choose continue. It prompts one more time because this is a self-signed certificate. I say I accept the risk and run. And guess what? Here we are. The username we said was admin, capital C, exclamation, SCO123. I'll just say remember the username for fun and click OK. Well, we've got some updates to do here. We'll let that run. And there you have it. ASDM is up and running with a brand new ASA firewall. And we're using that Docker container one more time because it came self-installed with all the Java components that we needed to make this work. So there you have it. Start to finish getting the latest version of ASA up and running once it don't come packaged with other things like CML or viral. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.